Cowboy's Gifts Our cowboy likes to bring us gifts. The breathing catfish was mother's favorite. I couldn't watch Vu Lee kill and clean it, but it tasted so good. After getting us dipped at church, our cowboy brought gifts, even more often. Vu Lee always asked for beef jerky, pointing to his muscles. I prefer really fat grapes. Today our cowboy brings chips and chocolate. My brother and I finish the chips in a flash. Later, mother throws away what's left of the candy. After she falls asleep, I retrieve the bars. They'll be better than hard rolls for lunch. October 4th. Someone knows. My word for today is delicious. Delicious. Mrs. Washington asked, was your lunch delicious? Before speaking, I have to translate in my head. She waits. I eat candy in toilet. Mrs. Washington looks panicked. What? I realize my mistake. Oh, the toilet. She doesn't look any happier. I add, not candy all time, but you always eat in the bathroom? I nod. Why? How can I explain dragonflies do somersaults in my stomach whenever I think of the noisy room full of mouths chewing and laughing? I'm still translating when her eyes get red. I'll pack you a lunch and you can eat at your desk. No eat in class. I'll fix that. Things will get better. Just you wait. I don't believe her, but it feels good that someone knows. October 13th. Most relieved day. At lunch the next day, I stay in class. Miss Scott nods. Can it be this easy? Inside my first brown paper bag, a white meat sandwich, an apple, crunchy curly things sprinkled with salt, and a cookie dotted with chocolate raindrops. Something salty, something sweet, perfect. I hear pounding footsteps in the long hall. I stop chewing. Two students run into class, giggling. I firm my muscles, ready for the giggles to explode into laughter thrown at me. But smiles appear instead. The girl has red hair swaying to her bottom, a skirt falling to her calves. She says, Pam, I hear Pim. The boy of coconut shell skin is dressed better than for church. A purple bow tie, a white, white shirt, that wouldn't wrinkle even if he rolled down a hill. His shaved head is so shiny and perfect, I want to touch it. He speaks slowly and loudly, but I don't mind because he's still smiling. He says, Stephen. I hear, Stephen. I have not seen them in class, but then I mostly stare at my shoes. I will write in my journal, October 14th, is most relieved day. As I have noted, April 30th was Saigon is gone day, and September 2nd was longest day ever. Though I was saving most relieved day for father's return, he can have the title my life's best day. October 14th. Smart again. Pink boy stands at the board he can't multiply 18 by 42. I go to the board, chalk the answer in five moves. My cheekbones lift to the ceiling until I see horror on the faces of Pim and Stevon. Pink boy is glowing red against white hair, white eyebrows, and white eyelashes. Miss Scott nudges me toward my seat. Pim reaches for my hand, hers trembling. I know Pink Boy will get me, but right now, I feel smart. October 20th. Hair. One day, 
the honey hair girl takes her pink ribbons and knots pigtails into my hair. She stares, shakes her head, yanks back her ribbons. Pink don't look good on you. Then three girls of bronze bread skin remove colorful barrettes from their hair and twist onto my head so many braids. The girl's hair holds the shape of braids even without barrettes. Pim and Stevan nod, so I keep still. Walking home, my shadow shows eels dancing on my head with tails in shapes of bows, stars, hearts. Mother and brothers notice, pause, then go on with their day. It isn't easy to sleep on a pile of plastic barrettes. The next morning when the girls slip off the barrettes, my hair falls back to being straight. The girls yank my flat strands, walk away. I've spent my life wishing for long hair, and this is what I get. October 30th. The busy one. Vu Li no longer has time for just me. At sunrise, he throws newspapers onto porches. After school, he flips perfect circles of beef. At sunset, he teaches Bruce Lee moves in our front yard. We line up in five rows, squatting and shifting, the only moves he has taught us. I make sure to get in the front row. First came the eager boys, next came the giggly girls, then came our neighbors who couldn't help their curiosity. They wave back now, at times bringing jiggly colorful food we don't eat. Everyone in Vuli's class wears yellow. Some even bought suits exactly like Bruce Lee. Brothers Kwong and Koi joined too. Once I saw mother behind the curtains, smiling. I squatted low and sturdy then. October 28th. War and peace. Miss Scott shows the class photographs of a burned, naked girl running, crying down a dirt road, of people climbing, screaming, desperate to get on the last chop helicopter out of Saigon, of skeletal refugees crammed aboard a sinking fishing boat, reaching up to the heavens for help, of mounds of combat boots abandoned by soldiers of the losing side. She's telling the class where I'm from, she should have shown something about papayas and tet. No one would believe me, but at times I would choose wartime in Saigon over peacetime in Alabama. October 29th. Pancake face. Pam is dressed in a skirt to the floor like the pioneers in our textbook. Stevan wears a beard like President Lincoln. I didn't know today is pretend day. Pink boy keeps asking, what are you? By the end of school, he yells an answer. She should be a pancake. She has a pancake face. It doesn't make sense until it does. I run hearing laughter loud, 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 which still echoes when mother comes home. I can't keep the day inside anymore. Mother asks, what's a pancake? Tears gush because I can't make myself explain. A pancake is very, very flat. October 31st, Halloween. Mother's response. Mother strokes my head. Chant, my child, breathe in, peaceful mind. Breathe out, peaceful smile. She strokes my back. Chant, my daughter, your whispers will bloom and shelter you from words you need not hear. Chant. Nami adida fat nami quante abotat. She strokes my arm. I chant, watching the gentle strokes to continue forever. I chant, wanting mother's calmness to sink into me. October 31st, night. Mrs. Washington's response. 
I'm quiet during my lesson with Mrs. Washington. For a long time, I stare at the floral wallpaper and shelves full of books. Then I notice a framed photograph of a boy in uniform. I had not known of her son, Tom, or of his death as a 20-year-old soldier in the very place where I was born. I never thought the name of my country could sound so sad. I'm afraid to look at Mrs. Washington. You hate me? Child, child. She comes close and hugs me. Right then I tell her about the pancake. She hugs me tighter, then pulls out a book. A book of photographs. A dragon dance at Tet. Schoolgirls in white Eodas. A temple built on a tree trunk. Tom had sent home these photographs of a hot green country that he loved and hated just the same. I suck in breath a photograph of a papaya tree swaying broad fan-like leaves in the full sun, showing off a bundle of fat orange piglets. Excited, I yell, do do. I stab at the image, best food, papaya? Your favorite food is papaya? By the time I teach her do do and she teaches me do do, we're laughing so hard we're hungry for pancakes. She tells me to take the book home. November 3rd. Cowboy's response. Before school, our cowboy shows up. Mrs. Washington told him about the pancake. He whispers to mother and brother Kwong, all will escort me to school with Mrs. Washington. I do not feel good. In the principal's office, the pink boy and his mother. It's very hot in here. Lots of strained voices holding in anger. Finally, all eyes are on pink boy who wrestles out. Sorry. I feel like throwing up. Mother rescues him. We know you're from a proper family and did not realize your insult the damage of your insult. While Brother Kwong translates Pink Boy's eyes, let me know he hates me even more. November 5th. Buddha, Buddha. Miss Scott shows photographs of the S shape of Vietnam, of green mountains and long beaches, of a statue of the Buddha reclining. She asked me, would you like to say anything? I know Buddha. I hear laughter and a murmur building. Buddha, Buddha. Miss Scott hushes them. All day long I hear whispers. Buddha, Buddha. I watch the clock, listen for the final bell, and dash. Pink boy and friends follow, releasing shouts of Buddha, Buddha, as I put one leg in front of the other, faster, faster but not fast enough to not hear them scream. Buddha, Buddha. I turn down the wrong street, away from the corner where Brother Koi would be. I have no choice but to run. I turn right where purple flowers curve like baby moons over butterfly bushes. Footsteps pound right behind me. Turn left where flowers grow blue. I wish I could control it. But the plates of flowers are now blue smears from my tears. Buddha, Buddha, breathes into the back of my neck. Faster, faster, my legs try, but the shouts are upon me. Someone pulls my hair, forcing me to turn and see a black hole in a pink face. Buddha, Buddha girl. My palms cover my eyes. I run, all the while surging from my gut. Fire, sourness, weight, anger, loneliness, confusion, embarrassment, shame. November 7th. Hate it. I don't make it inside the house, but sit under the willow tree, dig a hole, and into it, scream, scream, scream. I hate everyone. A lion's paw rips up my throat. Still I scream. I hate everyone. Hands grip my shoulders. Mrs. Washington is on her knees. Child, child, come with me. 
I hate everyone. She hoists me up by my armpits and drags me across the yard. You poor child, tell me, tell me. It hurts too much to keep screaming, but it feels good to thrash about like a captured lizard. Inside her house, Mrs. Washington throws her body on mine. Hush, 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 hush. She says it over and over like a chant, slowly, slowly. The screams that never stopped inside my head cool to a real whisper. I hate everyone, even your mama. She crosses her eyes, puckers her lips. I stop myself from laughing. She pats my hand. That one gesture dissolves the last of my hate spell. November 7th, after school. Brother Kwong's turn. Brother Kwong comes home with happy shouts. He did it, repairing a car no one else could. From now on, he's to work only on engines. Mother smiles so hard she cries. I pout. When is it going to be my turn? November 12th. 